Hello, my name is Ivan Page and I'm on the left and on the right is my son David Page and together we're going to build ourselves a garden railway. The building behind us, well that's a really big bonus, it is in fact a garage but it's 8 foot wide and 40 foot long so this is going to be wonderful to have the locos actually through a tunnel go into the building and at night time we'll be able to lock up the stock and uh, first things first we need to get ourselves a plan right here we go as you can see the uh, garage is on the right hand side so in this photo we'll go up to the top and here I'd like to have a double track tunnel front and next to it a single track tunnel front this will be for the rail car and further down another double track tunnel front also I'll have a station outside that will be brought in and I shall make myself a little halt that will also be able to be brought in next to the halt is the gap where you get into the garden I'll have a bridge there which you'll be able to lift up and store in the garage as well also I want to have a removable turntable this is removable so I can do a bit more modeling on it and the weather won't beat it up so keep it inside also right at the top of the picture now I'd like to do another bridge this also will be able to lift it out and store it inside Right, I've made a start on the inside so I know how high it's going to be, 61 centimetres. So let's go inside and have a look. Some temporary track has been put down, started on the backboard. The station I think will be on the left hand side so what you can see there, a bit of wood, will be the platform. Right, this plywood will be for the track bed. So I like to put some wood preserve on it. I like the Ron Seal one myself. So I should be giving that two coats. These are the height posts. This is what the track boards will be uh, resting on. Just checking that everything is level before we uh, add a baseboard. This is where I really appreciate Dave's skill. Here he is making like a Z frame. This will make it extra strong for the baseboards to go onto. Everything has to be spot on. And it is. Dave getting ready to put the final board on. And I must say it's looking really good. And while Dave's doing that, I'm doing this. This will be the backboard. So I've got the sky and I'm starting to fill in. You can see it better in this one where I'm doing the stone walls and putting a few sheep in to give it a distance look. Backboard is all up now and I'm just giving it the final touch, touching up the, the clouds, very exciting. time to put some roofing felt adhesive on just do a small area not too big the bricks are to make a good bond 
you might notice that there's a little flap left here. I will trim that round a little bit more. The reason for shaping it like this is so I can fold it underneath the baseboard and put the galvanised nails underside. So then when it rains, it will run off rather than into the nail holes. On some of the spare roofing felt, I scrape the chippings off and then where I've got a join, I put some more of the roofing felt adhesive and then sprinkle the little chippings and just press them down. So then you don't see any joins at all in the roofing felt. Next, just a little thing that I like to do. I like to paint on some masonry paint. Any grey will do really because it will fade once it gets weathered. I like to add this on because it, it locks in all the chippings and I find that they don't fly off. Here I am creating some, I suppose you call them dioramas. These will be to be put in place, as you can see in this picture, to break up the backboard and what will be the rock face, just to give it a 3D effect. I had this end piece and I didn't know what to do. I thought I want to make it into a rock. But I thought mm, we need to go upwards because there was a big gap there. So I thought, right, I can make a little mine there, an iron ore mine. The whole unit was made so I could bring it indoors. I then coated it with wood glue and polyfiller mixed together. This is the finished item. And then next I'll paint it grey and then dry brush it white and it just brings out the details. And here's the finished item ready to be put in place. Now it's time to really have some fun. <laughs> this is my homemade width gauge. This allows you to have the right width between one locomotive and another so they can pass each other and not collide. I've got to stop now because here comes my cuppa. Nice cup of coffee. I've got nice straight bits now. If you look and go right into the tunnel. It did have one heck of a kink on it really, but anyway, I've took my time, sorted that out. Got a few problems here with the point. Got to have some soldering done. But taking it easy and uh, we're doing all right. Right, I'm getting on well. And this is the first loco to come over the bridge. It's my brother there in control. Fantastic. Can you make it go backwards? Here she comes. Say hello, train. Here it comes, Jacob. Look, here it comes. Choo choo. Give him away. Say hello. Yeah, yeah about that. Just having a dry run of where the platform's going to be and the station and also the inner third rail that will be for the rail car that will run independently on its own. This bit is going to be very complicated. 
because you can see the two lines, the up and down line in the middle. But it's the other two to go to the station. And that's going to give me a problem, I think. Well, how about this then? The first track is now all the way around, joined up. The locomotive has just got to go over this point. Yes! And that makes it that this locomotive has actually gone all the way around. Fantastic. Very happy indeed. Here's the second track. We're really coming on now. Got a bit more work to do there. There's going to be a side in and a turntable at the end. But things are going good. And uh, I can see a locomotive coming round, Ingleby, so I'll keep quiet and uh, let you hear the sound. Well, I didn't expect that, and that is going to put a stop for a little while. Still, you can still have good fun, as you can see. Just connect your snowplow on, and well, that's what it's there for. <laughs> I've decided to add a siding. This will be the right hand side of the tunnel rails. And the reason for this is then I can cut out a little gap, as you can see here. This will enable us for somebody to bring a locomotive over that actually runs by steam. To be able to do that, you need to have a gap in your track and be able to boil up the water that's in the actual locomotive. This is inside and uh, the tunnel mouth coming along really good. Here's the one the other end, and I've nearly finished that, and there'll be a retaining walls there to the right hand side. David's come over and he's done a bit more engineering. He's very good at this, and this will be a rod that will go underneath all the track. So then when you move the lever, you don't have to lean right across the track. And this is what I've been up to lately. I'm doing a little bit of cosmetics. This is artificial grass cut into little strips and I use um, Evo Stick Impact. Uh, you brush it on the sides and on the actual material. Leave it about 20 minutes. It gets real sticky and you can just push them together. And another little uh, thing that I've done is I cut pieces and put them in between the tracks and also then tear out the green pieces and stick them on top of each other so you get a different depth so you get a 3D effect. Now we come to tunnel mouths. This tunnel mouth was made with a plastic mould. You put your cement in it and fill it all the way around. I'll flip this over and you can see the shape that you get. And I've got one here that was actually made in this mold. It's a very good product. And the company that makes this is 10 mil. Right, now we address the problem that I have of having an open tunnel mouth. First I'll just show you that on top is another plywood with artificial grass and on top of that I put a few rocks because this will stop the cats. Later on when this lovely bush I'm going to allow it to grow over a bit more and it'll just cover the tunnel mouth. It's going to look really nice there. 
after you put your locomotive and coaches away, I put a block on this. I cut a little groove so it fits flush. That's to stop cats and squirrels getting in and ruining your railway. Right, here's a little project that I enjoyed. I made this bridge and you can slide it out and store it inside the garage. This is the finished platform and station which is outside. It's allowed me to do some good modelling and what we do is we lift those up and take them into the garage. I've got some brackets there and we can just store them there. I've also made a little halt here that also gets lifted and took into the garage. And the red bridge, this actually has little tiny fish plates that slide onto the bridge's track. So you pull them off and you can lift the actual uh, bridge out and store that inside as well. Right, we come back inside again now. I've laid some more ballast. I love this. The product I use is from Woodland Scenics and the code I use is B1389. As you can see, I've added the retaining walls now and a bit of foliage and things are coming on nice. Nice turntable and to the left we have three lanes here and I shall be constructing a engine shed at a later date. This is going to be a road bridge. I make the actual item out of wood and then clad it with cardboard and this is the finished effect with all the individual bricks stuck on. This is a platform that will go for the inside station. Again, make the basic shape out of wood and then I cut the cardboard up the slabs. And here's the finished article in place and I'm very happy with it. And here I am with the outside turntable. I've cut the hole out and the other piece that you can see that is wider than the hole. The black line is the hole and that will go underneath the piece that I am holding. Here it is in place. I'm just making sure that everything fits. Adding little sidings to go off from the uh, turntable. And this is the legs that it will stand on. When removed, I just put rocks over the holes. The holes are actually plant pots. Taking it inside again and um, duplicating the bricks, just printing them out off of the um, computer and just making sure that you cut that edge that's got to be really tight nice and slow make sure that it's all fitting all the way around then I cut some more cardboard make slabs and uh, this is a finished product adding some grass and an operator Right, I'll just show you the remote control that I use to run my locos. 12 volt batteries in the locos. This is the remote control and I've switched it on and you can see at the top there, Rosedale. And uh, there's two buttons on the sides, that side and that side. And that you go up and down with the menu so you can have more than one locomotive. And the direction. I put the uh, 
red button in the middle, that was for the grandchildren. So if they're in a panic mode and something's going to happen, they can just press that and it will just stop the loco dead. Right, this is the plan for the engine shed. I'll have one lane there with a buffer, ash pit, another lane, another buffer, and this line will go all the way through the engine shed. First of all, as with all my other buildings, just make the basic shape, I cover it with cardboard, make a little grid, I then cut the bricks out these are one millimeter by two millimeter and stick them down with wood glue. After that, I paint it uh, red. I paint it with some gray and then I'll wipe the gray off while it's still wet. This then gives you the um, mortar effect. And with a little bit of weathering using black paint, you get the soot effect as where the locos would go in and out. To do the roof tiles, I make another grid, I mark it out, I do the first set of tiles and then I do tiles in between those tiles, if you get what I mean, and paint it grey. This is the floor of the engine shed and the yard. Uh, I've put cardboard down and polyfiller and I shall paint it black. This is the finishing effect. Right, I'll give you a little tour around the inside railway.
people often ask, where do you get your figures? Well, I get mine from Hardy's Hobbies. They are a 3D plastic printers. Here's my finished turntable inside. Here's the service area. And I just thought I'd show you my 132nd scale of Lancaster. Looking very nice, hanging from the ceiling. This is the yard and this is the line that goes right the way through the engine shed, under road bridge and off. Here we see David again, my engineer, just having a little tweak there on uh, Victoria, the rail car, making sure that all the cams are working right. And off she goes inside to her station where she should automatically stop. Brilliant. And if you like that video and uh, you'd like to see some more of my railway, uh, we are on YouTube. If you type in LPGR, Little Paxton Garden Railway, I'll also put a direct link just above this uh, video. Uh, there's about 10 videos on there, various items, constructions, uh, open days, us on TV, there's something on there for everyone. Anyway, once again, thank you very much for watching and hope to see you soon at one of our open days. Bye.